from what you told me, this must be one of the most difficult cases you've ever had. Yes, Bob. Matching which with a clever criminal is a tough job. In this case, all the criminal leaves behind to mark his vicious trail is a knife and his victim. How do you expect to find this man when you don't even know what he looks like? There's an accomplice, a woman, a striking woman. In other words, Bob, it's a case of Chazay La Femme. Meaning what? Find the woman, and you'll find the man. Fortunately, I know who she is. You know, trailing these criminals the way you do, without them getting wise, must take a lot of smart thinking. Oh, not so much smart thinking, Bob, as years of hard practice. That's why I wanted you to come with me on this case. It would have given you some valuable experience, helped you over the hurdles, and besides, it would have advanced you right off to the bat. I understand. Did you think over all of the things I told you last night, Bob? I sure did, Uncle Harry, every word of it. And I appreciate you recommending me to the U.S. Marshal. Also, his offer to put me in office right away. It had been the beginning of a fine career. I know that. And no doubt someday I'm going to join up. But not right now, Uncle Harry. Uh, you see, I want to be free for a while, a, a chance to roam a bit and see things. I think I understand. Although I will admit I'm disappointed. I kind of figured on killing two birds with one stone. I sort of counted on you coming with me on this trip. I could use you, you know. Here she comes, right on time. Uncle Harry, good luck. You behave yourself, young man. I'll do that. This time, Miss Mary Conway, eh? You're through, Blanche. I don't know what you're talking about. Come on. I caught up with you sooner than I expected. Oh, Stagecoach ready to leave. Get on it, quick. in the mountains as we planned, we would have avoided all this. Well, I stood the silence and the loneliness of that forsaken spot as long as I could. It was driving me out of my mind. You would have known a different kind of silence and loneliness if I hadn't left things flat and Logan to come up here to get you out of trouble. Well, that's all over with, isn't it? Perhaps. Oh, well. Stevens is the only one that knew what she looked like.
Come back here, lady. Come back here. All right, get on your way. You can't leave that young lady out here like this. Again. Yeah, who was it this time? The same gang, the same way. They keep so far away we couldn't get their faces. And yeah, that's not all, Sheriff. There was another traveler, a young woman. When the hell is up, she got hysterical and ran away from us out into the brush. She's yeah. out there now. Well, you got to do something to help her, Sheriff. Well, what does she look like? Well, I, uh, I didn't get a real good look at her. She, uh, she wore glasses and red all the time. Poor girl, she must have been a school mom. Don't you worry about it, Mr. Slade. We'll find her and meet up with that gang, too. Jim, get the horses. Any the rest of you men want to go along? I'm with you, Sheriff. I'll go too, Bill. How about you, Mr. Slade? Oh, sure, I'll go, Sheriff, but... Uh, well, I guess I've had enough for one day. Besides, you know, I'm not much of a horseman. Oh, I should remember. Come on. And if these bones aren't keep up, none of us will be safe anymore. But we can't allow this lawlessness to go on. We've got to do something to put a stop to it. With all due respect to our sheriff, we need somebody to take matters in hand. Now, if I had my way about it, the first thing I do... My deepest sympathy for a great loss. I hope you will now reconsider my offer to join this department and immediately, John C. Henderson, U.S. Marshal. First your father, now his brother. When are you leaving, son? Just as soon as I can get ready, Mother. Oh, no, you don't. You're not leaving without me. I'll get the horses. Goodbye, Mom. Come back. Don't you worry. I will. you had me fool. Your kid up is great. Perfect. And Denver, you buying this ranch was a touch of genius. Maybe passing off as Blanche's brother may have inspired you. But from now on you can drop all that. Understand? Yes, I understand. Who's a bien, my lead? How about the geologist? I mean the fellow that's been looking around for oil. I curled him to the Mannix ranch. There, he went over to the creek. He put a match to the surface. The oil caught fire. You should have seen the grin on that bird's pan when they all flared up. <laughs> sure. That test shows the real quality. 
Where else did he go? To the next ranch. And he done it again. Scribbling notes all the while. You're going to go into town and look up this geologist. Get all the information you can about the oil on those ranches. Be careful. Don't arouse the suspicion. Some riders are headed this way. Keep your horses out of sight. Keep your eyes open. No slips. Be careful. Patty got scared out of her wits and run over to the brush and we've been trying to find her. And as we've searched all the ranches, thought maybe she might have wandered in here. Oh no, Monsieur Le Sheriff, I have not seen her. She has not come here. Oh, that poor thing. That is a shame. Yes, I reckon we'll go mighty hard with her, seeing as how she's a schoolmarm from the city. She's from the city? Yeah. Oh, ce pauvre enfant. That is terrible. She will be so afraid. But for me, I would not be afraid. Oh no. I come from Montreal where the open country is much wilder than this place. But this is not helping her. The poor woman. You go to find her right away. And if I see her, I will come to tell you. I sure hope you do, ma'am. Anyhow, when you come to town to visit, I look me up. I'd be mighty glad to see you again. Thank you. I will. And, uh, good night. Bonsoir. You were absolutely right in wanting to be an actress, my pet. That was perfect. Oh, Jim, let's give up all this. Let's leave for San Francisco right away, and I'll get a job in a theater there, and soon we'll have all the money we need. What? Give up the oil deal? No, Blanche. We put this over, and you can have anything you want. What makes you so sure the Emory that murdered your uncle's in Logan? I'm not sure, Hoot. But the depot agent here told me that a woman left for Logan right after it happened. And from his description, it sounds just like the one we're looking for. Besides that, it's exactly the way those two work. Uncle Harry explained the whole setup to me. Oh. You mean the man we're after goes ahead into town, gets everything set, later the woman joins him and they pull the deal. That's right. They've got a clever act, and she's the bait. After they get what they want, he finishes off whoever falls for the game, then they disappear. Start the same thing all over again someplace else. Mmm, pretty slick. And mighty clever, too. And we can't go into Logan packing a badge. It'll be just too bad. Let's go in the way we originally planned. That's it. these lines and these marks there, so difficult. I cannot find my ranch. What is the number of your ranch? Uh, 324. 324. 324. Here it is. Oh, merci, monsieur. It is so easy when one knows how to do this. That's an excellent location. Oh, but I am selling my property. I am returning to Montreal. Oh, but you shouldn't sell. You should stay here. No, but why? Well, if you'll step over to my hotel. I'll explain the reason why you shouldn't sell your property. Well, of course, if there's a reason. Oh, there well, is. Of course. Now, this is all oil land. And your property is right on the rim. Oh, wonderful. Another year, wonderful. You know, I'd be more than willing to advise you. Oh, that is, if you'd let me. Ah, oh, you are so very kind, monsieur. Perhaps I could call at the ranch some evening. Yes. That might be better than here. Ah. Uh, for supper, perhaps? Oh, fine. Well, I must be going now. Bonjour, monsieur. Oh, 
allow me later. Oh, you are very kind, monsieur. Everything you want is on the map in his room, 204. Merci, monsieur. Merci. Entirely welcome. Incarnation, didn't you camp at the edge of town instead of getting me out of my bed at this hour? I think too much of my horse. Come on, open up. I'm in a hurry. It's getting so that a man can't have a decent night's sleep these days. if you want coffee. They're closed and you're open, ain't you? see him before? No. And I never saw a drifter like that that didn't meet up with trouble. <laughs> and being that we have a long ride ahead of us, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Cornelius Wadsworth Parker. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Parker. I'm Mrs. Bradley. This is my husband, Hank. We own the general store in Logan. And Mr. Parkford, I'm president of the church club. Well, 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 president of the church club. Yes. And what is your line of business, Mr. Parkford? Uh, building communities, which reminds me of Bell Junction. Why, do you know when I got through there, that was no more a junction, it was Bell City. Of course, they uh, insisted I become mayor, but I declined. You see, uh, I'm not interested in politics. No, sir. I want to help communities forge ahead. That's my reason for going to Logan. I've heard things about that town. I believe in you. I'm sure you'll be more than welcome, Mr. Parkman. Thank you. Gonna be mighty rough for a spell, folks. But don't worry, I'll get you there. Sakes alive. I hope so. Now, Rosie, don't get excited. Now, don't you worry. Everything's gonna be all right. If that gang's figured on holding up the coach, this time I'm gonna fool them. Yeah. Yeah.
It was that city fella. They found him dead in his room with a knife stuck in his back. It's lucky we're going to have a new election. Things has got to be different in this town. That hombre drifted into town last night. It looks mighty suspicious. Here it comes now. They've lost the leader. They've been held up again. Whoa! Another hold up, Jim? I fooled that gang this time, taking the old road, but I lost one of my leaders. He fell and broke his leg. Oh. Rosie, glad you're back. I've got news of plenty. You done right, Jim. Good. More than that. He did a masterful job of driving. So? Everything happened since you went away. Everything. Even the murder of a man found with a knife in his back. And that's not all. But wait a later. I don't want to miss a word of this. But in the meantime, I want you to meet a man that's going to do wonders for Logan. Lizzie Morgan. I want you to meet Cornelius Parker. Pleased to meet you. Be the pleasure, Mrs. Morgan. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Packford, I want you to be our sheriff. Sheriff, Mr. Packford. How do you do, sir? Glad to know you, Sheriff. Thank you. May I join in your welcome, Mr. Parkford? My name is Slade. Well, how do you do, Mr. Slade? I I'd like to meet you, Mr. Parkett. I own the livery stable. They call me Whippletree. How do you do, Mr. Whippletree? Say, you folks have certainly given me a mighty warm welcome this town. <laughs> now to make things just straight, I'm going to set them up with the Golden Eagle. Come on, Jerry. I'll join you later. <laughs> This is a real pleasure. It'll be a comfort, I'm sure, to the citizens of this charming little community to realize from now on that they have in me a man who will fight tooth and nail to preserve law and order. I'll drink to that. Me too. To Mr. Parkford. Just a minute. That's what I say too. I'm doing the dealing. And I said I was cutting. I like this game, but I don't like double dealing. As far as you're concerned, this game's closed. Get out. Keep your hands easy, mister. Come on, I'll set one up. Now that is exactly the kind of lawlessness I'm talking about. You know, these men of the least provocation resort to their guns. They're the real menace to this community. I don't like the sound of your lingo, mister. I wonder if you can wag your toes as fancy as you wag that tongue of yours. Start dancing. I, I said dance, plug hat. Come on, give him a tune. <laughs> Make any false moves while you're talking, Sheriff. That's what I'm warning you not to do. Now get going. This town ain't got no room for your kind. And don't let the sun sit on you here. That'll depend on me. If I reckon to stay, I'll be meeting up with you. You know, Sheriff. If my memory serves me correctly, that man's known as Cheyenne. He's the same one Sheriff Connors of Hamlin, Texas, described to me when I arrived there. He's lightning fast and a dangerous outlaw. Why, he's wanted in a dozen communities, and I have never been subjected to such embarrassment in all my life. Well, I'm very sorry, Mr. Parkwood. Mr. Parkwood, you've seen enough in your brief stay here to know just what we're up against. Now, you can readily see how the sheriff here needs all of us to back him up. That's what I meant on the stage. Now I can see why we need a man like you in Logan. Thank you. Let's have a drink, boys. Set him up, bartender. Oh, what is it, Jim? Give me a steak, too. Make it wrap. Hey. 
It's none of my business, but that Gabby Ombre sure spread you out to the sheriff after you left. Yeah? You said your name was Cheyenne. It was looked for in Texas and a lot of other places, too. He needs to have his lip buttoned. What about the sheriff? You staying or you getting? I sort of like it here. As that sheriff starts gunning for me, this town will be needing a new star packer. I can let you in on a good thing, Cheyenne. That is, unless you're figuring to work alone. That depends. Can't talk here. But if you're interested, catch up with me right after sundown, six miles west where the road splits at the big oak. You see, Mr. Slade, finding a man with a knife stuck in his back, lying dead in his own room, with a door locked on the inside, ain't the sort of thing that belongs in this territory. I quite agree with you, Sheriff. I can't understand it. Neither can I, Jim. Things are going from bad to worse. What are you going to do about it? Do about it? Get more cooperation, less criticism. That might help. I'm no detective, Hank. Well, why don't you wire the U.S. Marshal's office and get some help? Now, there you go again, Hank. I did just that an hour ago, and Pat locked the door, too. That's all I can do till the Marshal gets here. And that same hombre that did the shooting at the Golden Needle came to the stable just now, got his horse and rode away as if he was scared or nothing. I ordered him out of town before sundown, didn't I? <laughs> Ain't a telling you your business, Sheriff. But I am a telling you that he stopped at my barn last night, and he's the only stranger in town when the murder took place. You men ought to go right out and bring the stranger in. We ought to find out what he was doing here in Logan. I'm the same mind, Lizzie. It's due time for necktie party. Put a stop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, hold on, folks. You're all wrong. That's no way to carry out the law. What you're trying to do is criticize the law with one breath. With the next, you're ready to take it into your own hands. Maybe, but we ain't taking no chances. Shut up. Hold your tongue. Right, Lizzie. Let Mr. Parkford talk. Here's what I mean. The stranger attempts to return to Logan. It's your duty to the community. Turn him over to the law. Then we'll question him. Give him a fair trial. If he's found guilty, well, the sheriff here knows what to do. That's the way to carry out the law, folks. And the only way we can hope to drive all instance out of Logan. We've been waiting for our leader. Here he is, our new mayor, Cornelius Clark. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, that's what we've been waiting for. Where to now? Follow me, Cheyenne. It ain't far. Comes Jed with a stranger. This is Cheyenne, the man the boss wanted to have join up with us. This is Denver, Tex, Chuck, Blackie, Shorty, and Red. Harley. Who's the boss? That's something that ain't your affairs right now. Well, it ain't, huh? Well, I ain't joining up with no outfit unless I know who heads it. Hold on, Cheyenne. Denver here ain't telling it right. You'll get to meet up with the boss later, after you worked around a while. Well, that's different. What's the setup? Tell him, Denver. Right. Just forget I cut into your rough. You're asking what's the setup? It's oil. Oil? Yeah, oil and plenty of it. Enough to make all of us sit easy. When the boss puts this over, we'll all be sitting in easy chairs, wearing silk shirts and drinking plenty of liquor, and won't have no star packers to fret about neither. If anything, we'll use them to watch our bankrolls. <laughs> <laughs> Takes a lot of money to drill for oil. Can the boss handle it? That's where we come in. We hold up the stage until we get enough jack. Can't get enough that way, we blow the bank in town. Pretty, ain't it, Cheyenne? It listens good. 
feel even better. Come on over, I'll show you our hotel. <laughs> Hey, this isn't bad. Uh, you can have the big feather bed over here or the little one over there. <laughs> you got a razor, Jed? I think I'll freshen up a bit. Sure. You don't have to fix up for us. I ain't fixing up for you. I'm going visiting. Why don't you come along with me, Jed? I think you'll like my kind of fun. You betcha. I've been doing some thinking, Jed. Uh, you know, there's an old saying. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Don't worry, Cheyenne. I ain't gonna crowd your pasture. I'm going into Logan. You're all right. What time will I meet you? Well, we ought to get back to camp by midnight. That's just time enough. I'll be seeing you then. Someone I'd give a heap to be visiting, too. Adios. There was a light in that window, and I saw it. Nothing. Hey, what's the tree? Huh? Get over there and light that lamp. Who, me? Yes, you. Why, uh, Whipple Tree said he saw a light burning in this room. I sure did. Sure as shooting. Hey, huh? This is a dead man's room. Maybe it's a ghost. Let's go 
ghost. It could be. Let's get out of here. Maybe, uh, maybe we better get out of here, too. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. He's been drinking again. Maybe you're right. Well, good night, sir. Good night, Mr. Parker. Come on out, Bob. That was close. Yeah, I took a chance and got in the geologist's room. He must have seen your light. And that's the motive. Hmm. An imprint of a man. Whoever murdered that engineer was after oil. Oil? Boot, you're finding this ties in with everything. I think we're on the right trail, all right. If I could just find out who the leader of this gang is, we'd be sure. But I'm afraid that's going to take a little time. So far, no one will talk. You see, they're not quite sure of me yet. Yeah, but that cagey. Plenty. What about the woman? Have you found any trace of her? Not yet. But there's a good-looking young ranch woman new in Logan. I found out she visited the engineer just before the murder. I'm not so sure she isn't the one we're after. But I'll find out. I'll do that the first thing. I'll meet you by the old adobe the first chance I get. Wait a minute. That liveryman's downstairs watching. I'll get rid of him. Go ahead. Still looking for that ghost? Got me too. I can't sleep. That's no ghost sneaking down that stairway. Come on. So you see, Cheyenne, that's how I happened to join up with this outfit. They got a pretty good setup, Jed. Yeah, but after we pull this deal, I'm taking my cut, getting her and the kid and hitting the trail. You better be careful cutting back. The law has a habit of catching up with you. I guess you know that. But I figure if we can get to California, we'll be all right. You know, there's one thing about this setup that gets under my hide. What's that? Who's the boss? What's the matter? Are you afraid to talk to him? Oh, now, take it easy, Cheyenne. You know I wouldn't double-cross you. Well, neither can I double-cross the boss and tell you who he is. Come on, I got something to tell you. I got some news, boys. The stage pulled out of Tracy with a shipment of gold. They're coming into Logan by the old trail. Trying to pull a fast one on the boss. But he knows all about it. So we'll surprise him. It's about time. I'm getting fed up sitting around here doing nothing. Oh, yeah? Well, we was right congenial till you joined up with us, and all you've been doing ever since is beefing. Got anything to say? You can talk up right now. You can tell that bird when he wakes up. If he ever tries to pull anything on me like that again, I'll drop him for good.
Good day, madam. Hello. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Camillus Parkford. I've come to visit you and your husband. Good day, monsieur. But let me tell you something confidentially. I am not married. Oh, well, that's all right. Uh, you see, I'm visiting the uh, neighboring ranches on behalf of my campaign. And if you'll pardon me for saying so, I ain't, uh, that is, uh, I've never seen such a charming and more good-looking woman than you are who is trying single-handed to wrest a living out of this wild and dangerous territory. Oh, oh, oh. Monsieur, you speak so beautiful. Thank you, madam, thank you. But you're the one who deserved the compliments. You're a right brave woman. You're the sort of woman this community should be mighty proud of. <laughs> oh, monsieur, you are a flatterer. If I listened to you, I would get spoiled. But come inside and have a little glass of milk, Mr. Mr. Uh, Parkford's the name, Parkford. Oh, of course, Parkford. Well, if there isn't too much trouble, a glass of milk would be splendid. Oh, but no, come inside. Say, you have a nice place here. It is homey. I'll be back in a minute. I uh, see dressmaking is also one of your accomplishments. Oh, yes. Mama, she teaches me to do everything, even to raise the silkworms. But don't stand up. Sit down, Mr. Uh, Parkford. Oh, Parkford, of course. And it's such a pretty name. Thank you, but I'll bet it ain't half as pretty as yours. Oh, but it is. It's better. My name is Susanna Giraud, and I hate the name Susanna. That's where you're wrong. Susanna? Susanna's a great name. A fine song was written from Susanna. It goes like, Oh, Susanna, won't you wait for me? I've come from Alabama with a banjo on my knee. Come on, you sing it now. Oh, Susanna, won't you wait for me? I've come from Alabama with a banjo on my knee. <laughs> That's the woman, all right, Bob. Oh, she's mighty clever. I caught up with a weak strand. She and her partner have been scattering around. Get acquainted with her, play up to her, and the strand will snap. Partner will fall through the trap, come right out in the open. There's dynamite Bob, but you got to do it. Playing a woman. That's going to be mighty tough for me to do, Ruth. I guess I'll have to go through with it. Yeah, I know what you're up against. There's another thing that goes against my grain, and that's pulling that hole down. Yeah, but there's no other way out. Hey, wait a minute. I've got it. I know what I'm gonna do when I start out with that gang. For sure. He's calling for a showdown. Not out here. I'll fix that, hombre, when we get back to camp. Now get up there and start rolling. It's plain local, Cheyenne, for you to show your face. It's against the boss's orders. I know what I'm doing. I've had dummy boxes before. And listen, Denver, if the boss doesn't like what I do, let him tell me, not you. I think we've had about enough of you, Cheyenne. It's time you started getting it into your head that you're not running this outfit. Hold on! You're playing rattleweed at the start, something that's going to end us shorthanded. You're all haywire too, Cheyenne. You better get out and cool your heels. We'll talk to you later. What do you say, Denver? I reckon you're right. No use fighting among ourselves. Better come over here, Tex, and I'll fix that hand up. 
Cheyenne sure made a mistake doing what he did. And I'm agreeing with you, Denver. But you talk wrong. Maybe. But it's going to be me or him sooner or later. Yeah, that's him with the black outfit on and the two fancy guns. Uh, I've been telling you right along not to be everywhere after. What are you waiting for? I ain't waiting. I'm leading. Come on, boys. Well, thanks to you, now we're getting somewhere, Mr. Factor. And if we don't succeed in ridding Logan of this lawlessness, we're going to have to appeal to the federal government. I quite agree with you, Mr. Parkman. So I had an idea last night that if we should... Out on my trail. I'm going to take cover in your barn. Will you give a stranger a chance? outlaws been holding up the stagecoach is headed this way and he's been recognized. Young fellow with a black outfit on, two fancy guns. See anything of him? Oh yes, Monsieur Le Sheriff. I see him about a minute ago. Yeah, where? Over there, riding like the very devil. Oh, thank you. sure did me a favor, and I ain't forgetting it. You look much too nice to be such a bad man. That is why I have helped you. But you had better go now. Yeah, I reckon I had better go. But if I stand here much longer looking at you, I might break trail and come back. No, you had better go. Adios. I hear you say you were a miss. You did not hear it, but I am. If I'd come back here tonight, would you see me? I'd hide my horse in the barn. But you must not come back, monsieur. It's too dangerous. It'll take more than a star tracker to keep me away. No, no, no. No, you must go. <laughs> Don't come back. been going when he drifts away from camp every night. Thanks, Denver. I'm glad you told me. I know how to take care of that. I want you to send Tex into Blanche the first thing in the morning. Tell her I can't see her tomorrow night. I get it, boss. And one more thing. I want you to take care of Parkford. You're going to button up that loud trap for good. Understand? I'll get it done. I'll get moving. Right through the back door. Aha! 
Howdy. Your name's Pikeford, ain't it? That's right, my good man. Well, I've been wanting to meet you. My name's Smith. Well, Mr. Smith, I like to meet everybody. <laughs> How is he, Rosie? Oh, I'm worried, Hank. Well, Parkford's a mighty fine man, but he stopped us from doing what we were going to do. And that's the reason he's in there now. Law or no law. We ought to go out and round him up and string him up. That's for my sentiments. That's the first time I'll ever be with you, Whippletree. And we should do it right no, now. I've here. been saying that yeah, right here. Here, here, here. Don't you men know there's a man lying in there at the point of death? The doctor wants you to be quiet. Rosie. Get in there and give the doctor a hand and tell Liz to get that water hot. I will. And hurry it up, will you please? Now come on, men, break it up, move out of here. Come on. Boss might slip up on this tricky hombre tonight, and I ain't taking any chances. I'm going in there and start a fight with him right now. When I start swinging on him, you drop him. Cheyenne, the boss wants you to know that from now on, I'm giving the orders. Yeah? Yeah. You're not drifting away from Cat no more, unless I'm a telling you. I'll drift whenever I feel like drifting. And if you don't like it, that's just too bad. I don't like it. Maybe I'll play Snake too, Tex. I'm leaving this outfit. And listen, Denver. I want my split at sunup, or I'll come back here and take it. I threw that hombre yet. You said you were leaving, Cheyenne. I'm leaving with you. What do you say? Sure, Jed. Nothing I'd like better. I might lead you to that wife and kid you've been wanting to see. What are you driving at? A clear, straight trail. Say, you ain't preaching to me, are you? No. Nope. I just happen to like you. That's why I'm giving you a fresh start. What do you mean? I'm going where you're going, Cheyenne. All right, trail me. Exactly as I tell you. Call Shorty Chuck and Tex in here and call them like you mean it. Shorty, Tex! Chuck, come in here! Huh? 
Drop those guns. Now get over there. Come on, Chuck, start moving. Thanks, Jed. I'll get him out of here. Shorty, get him up. It might interest you to know that Detective Stevens was my uncle. May I have a light, please? Really got it. 